Good morning. I want to thank you again for joining with us. We are in a, a brief series in between Revelation chapter 5 and chapter 6. We are reminded as we open up the book of Revelation of the Lord's perfect love for us. Jesus Christ, it is written, to him who loves us. The love of God defines our relationship with him. The word of God defines God himself as the author of love, the source of love, the standard for love. Jesus Christ gave his love for us. When he touches the heart of an individual, and through faith we receive Jesus Christ as Savior, the Holy Spirit works in our heart. We step into that love relationship that defines us the rest of our life. That love defines him, it is to define us and everything that we do, what we do and who we are. When we know Jesus Christ and his love, what's revealed in our life is authentic relationship. That's what I pray for. Pray for it for me, pray for it for our church, pray for it for all believers, that we would display that and show that. There's a real need in today's culture, there's a real need in the world today to see authentic Christians who are in love with the Savior, with Jesus Christ. The people in your life next to you need to see you love Jesus Christ and do it well. That love is, is vertical. It's, it's with God, not a God, not any God, not some God. It's with the God of the universe, the creator of the universe, the God of God's word. How important that is. It's personal. We're to love God. He says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind. It's very personal. It's to touch your heart. When it does, a genuine relationship comes out. It's, it's revealed to everyone. It means being intentional as well. When we have genuine relationship, authentic relationship, it's because we're being intentional. You shall love the Lord your God with all, with everything. All is repeated multiple times there. It takes work to love back. It takes work to express love. It takes work to stay in that relationship and to learn what love's all about and to grow in love. It takes work and being intentional to facilitate, to nurture, to grow our relationship with God. He's always at work in our life. And we're always in the process of becoming, becoming more like him. That's when God touches the heart. Genuine relationship is when God touches our heart. It's a matter of becoming. That's what it's all about. Paul reminds us in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, as we look at Christ, as we behold him, gaze on him, make him the fix, the focus of our life, of our eyes, then we're transformed. And we're transformed to be like him. We're transformed to look like him. We are able to love in a way that conveys a relationship, a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ. That's my prayer that will take place for you and for me. And so it's all about love. Becoming turns to doing in our life. We have looked at this element of God touching our heart, the need to, the need to love God from our heart, with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, all of our mind. Now we're turning that page because... Because a relationship takes place, then a transformation happens in how we live our life. The result then is, is genuine relationship. The res when we love authentic authentically, that reveals relationship with Jesus Christ. Because we are loving him, and in that life-to-life -life relationship, what's revealed then is a genuine relationship as well. It's horizontal. Because he's touched our heart, he touches the lives of others through us. He uses us. Luke 10, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. It is, it is a horizontal reality. We, are, we shift from uh, becoming, from God touching our heart, to now expressing that, doing. And the doing here in this verse, chapter uh, Luke 10, verse 27, the doing is love. The love, loving, is the doing. It's not a matter of just uh, commands in the Bible. It's not a matter of a checklist that we check off every day while well, I read my Bible and I prayed. No, the transformation that occurs in our life is that we learn how to love and to put it into practical action in our life. That's what we're talking about today. We've talked about the need for the Lord to touch our hearts. That has to happen first. If I'm ever going to express what Jesus Christ means to me, if I'm ever going to express to others why they need Jesus Christ, they need to see it from my life. They need to see transformation in, in my life. They need to see from me that I love Jesus Christ with all my heart. So how do we do that? It is life to life. It's, it's the Lord Jesus Christ engaging our heart. We respond back to him. We receive him as Savior. He, he continues to engage in our life. He pursues us. 
always continually he's pursuing after us. We've talked about that. And our response to him is, is to conform to his character, conform to his image. And so doing becomes loving God and then it becomes loving others. And so the doing is loving. So how do we do that? Well, the doing is energized by God. We need to realize that and understand that. Christ enables us to do that. That's what he does. It's worship. It's prayer. We engage God relationally. And the doing is able to take place. The, the, my ability to love, like Christ would have me to love, happens because this is first taking place. First Timothy 1 2. Paul says, I thank God. I thank him. He's given me strength. He's judged me faithful. And he's appointed me to his service. He's called me to a specific service. Here, Paul was called to be a missionary, a preacher of the gospel, to go from church to church. But this isn't just about Paul, this verse. It is about his role. It's about his specific call to the ministry. But it also speaks to us. God has appointed us as well. Not to be missionaries in this sense. Not to have the role of missionary in this sense. But, but to convey the love of Jesus Christ in our life. To serve him. To be faithful to him. To be strengthened by him for ministry. To do what he's called us to do. Is a path for your life specifically and for mine. Will I follow that? Will you follow what God wants you to do? <clears throat> God strengthens us so we can do it. I can do all things, the will of God, through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things that are pleasing to God, that, that are in harmony with God's work. I can do all those things through Christ who strengthens me. See, God enables it to happen. I love, I love this passage reminder from the life of Moses when God called him to deliver Israel from Egypt. He says, I can't do it. I can't do it. He gave all kinds of excuses. And God says at the end of the day, he says here at the end of this conversation, is Moses, Moses, what do you have in your hand? Moses, what do you, what, what's in your life? What have I given you? And Moses says, I've got a staff. God, God basically says, you know what? That's enough. I'm going to use that staff and a willing heart, and I'm going to deliver my people. What is in your hand? God, God says to us this morning, what's in your life? What have I poured into your life? Just release it. Let it go. Let me use it, and I will do something through your life. I mean, don't you want to see God do that? Don't you want to see God just touch other people because of you? That's my prayer. Doing is enabled by God. Doing is Christ-centered. It's always about Christ. Not I, but Christ. His character needs to be revealed in us. As we grow in discipleship, uh, as, as we mentor and are mentored, we invest in people. People invest in us. The Word of God being poured into our life. We grow. It's Christ-centered. It's about Christ. Acts chapter 4 just reminds us, Peter and John, when they ministered, the, the people around them, the religious leaders, were astounded at what they were able to do and the boldness they had. And they made this connection. They belonged to Jesus Christ. They followed Jesus Christ. They were disciples of Jesus Christ. You know what? And that's what, that's what needs to be, happen in our life. I just want someone to make the connection back to my life. That Jesus Christ has changed my life, and he's using me. I want you to have the confidence that God is able to use you. And if I give my heart to him, and if you give your heart to him, and we follow after him, God will use your life. People will notice, and there will be impact, and there will be spiritual fruit, and people will make the connection to Jesus Christ because of your life. That's what God calls us to do. We're to reflect his character. When we yield to him, the Spirit of God is at work. The fruit of the Spirit and many other things here in the Scripture. There's simply this. This fruit of the Spirit, it is the character of Jesus Christ. He lived this, displayed this. It's from Him. It's, he's the source. And, and when, we, when we display this in our life, we are displaying Jesus Christ. Doing is service. It's action, right? It's serving, but it's serving for God. It's serving for His purpose. It's serving for Him. It's fellowship in the life of the church. It's expressing to one another's in the life of the church. It's all those things. Every service, we were reminded in Peter, every service, every, every time, every opportunity that we serve, it's an act of grace. Each one of us has received a gift. We're to use it. Use it to serve, not for ourselves, not to build a reputation, not to build a kingdom, a personal kingdom. We're to use it to serve others. We're to be a good manager of everything God's poured into our life, and we are to be conveyors of God's grace. Every time we serve, it is to, we are to, to see that opportunity as a, as a means of conveying the grace of God. Doing is sharing, not just sharing, serving, but looking for opportunity to share. Sharing Jesus Christ, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 2, 4. We have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. And so we speak. 
not to please man, but to please God who tests our hearts. Again, Paul is speaking of his call to the gospel and his role as missionary. But you know what? That also applies to us because God has called every believer to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, to take the, to take the gospel into the world, to make disciples. He's called us to do that. Um, we've, been, we've been given an obligation, every believer. We all, we all have an obligation to convey the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. The world doesn't see it as good news initially because of sin. Sin hates that message and will and will re, re, uh, repudiate and repel and push back against the gospel of good news. So we need boldness. We need confidence and stand strong with the truth. Because we're not here to please people, but we're here to love people. We're not here to please people. We're here to love people. We must love people from our heart. That comes from God. And so we share the gospel. How? Yeah, verbally, but we share it by serving. Love your enemies, Luke 6.35. Especially those who are ungrateful, those who are evil, because Jesus did. Do good, lend, expect nothing in return. We're, we're to serve those who consider us to be their enemies. We're to have a, the heart of a servant, even for those who make our life difficult and hard. You know, that's only the power of God. It can't happen any other way. Because my, my flesh will, will resist that, so will yours. My spirit will resist that unless the spirit of God is at work. So how might we engage people? How do we engage people? We're to be doers. God's touched our heart. He's touching our heart. It's a continual work of God. His desire is, is so that we become doers. Not just hearers of the word, but, but doers as well. And the doing is fulfilled in loving. We are to love our neighbor. We are to love our enemy. That is how the doing is fulfilled. As we carry out, as you carry out the commands of God's word for your life, as we are obedient to scripture and to what he desires for us to do and for me to do, what we are really doing is conveying a life-to-life -life love relationship. Every time we honor his word and obey his word and do what the word of God tells us to do, we are, we are conveying love to God. God, I love you so much. I honor you. I exalt you. I worship you. I obey you. I will keep your word with a heart that is genuine and true. Every time we carry out his commandments in relationship to the people in our life, we are saying, not only do we love God, we love the people that God has placed into our path. We are called to love them, everyone. That's the challenge. So how, how do we engage people? How do we engage those people in ministry? Believer and unbeliever, in the church, outside the church. How do we do that? Well, let me just share a few suggestions that might be helpful. I'm not going to answer all your questions. We're not going to uh, uh, fulfill a complete task list of all the things that we can do. We don't have time for that. Let's put a structure in place that can help us. So how do we do that? How do we serve? How do we share? How do we engage people relationally? We have to remember here how God equipped Moses, how he equips us with spiritual gifts. God, God, when he calls us, he equips us, he resources us. As God said to Moses, what's in your hand? God just says to you, what's in your life? What have I given you? How have I made you? How have I wired you? Not only what is your personality, um, what are the passions, what are the desires of your heart? When he saves us, he transforms all of those things, our personality, our passions, our desires, our skills. He, he transforms all of those, all those things. And we just, we say to the Lord, if there's something in my life that doesn't honor you, I let go. If there's something in my life that can be used for you, I, I release it to you and, and I just say, God, would you use it? Would you use that in my life? Let me use that for you. That's what we do. Came across the book many years ago. It's been around for quite a while now. Um, Becoming a Contagious Christian. I've referenced this many times, used it in ministry. 1996 it came out. It speaks specifically to how to, how to connect to people relationally when it comes to being a soul winner, sharing the gospel. I'm going to broaden that focus to not just that environment, but just simply to engaging people, period, believer or unbeliever. So let's look at that. Let's draw some pieces. I've been, we'll adapt it here and put it into place. And I think it might be helpful to you and to I together. Let's do that. How do we engage people in ministry? How do we convey the love of God? Because it's touching my life first. Remember, whatever we do or desire to do or want to do in relation to conveying the word of God to people, it first has to touch my life. It's got to change me. It's got to, it's, it, it must be a representation of the love relationship that I have with Christ for it to be authentic and powerful. One of the ways we engage people is just 
be direct. I just get to the point. Some of some people are just wired that way. Some people are wired to to just be right to the point. There's a time and a place for that. Absolutely. Uh, think of Billy Graham, who's now with the Lord. When he preached the gospel, he preached the gospel. Every time he preached, it wasn't a lot of deviation. It was the gospel. You need a savior, and you need to decide now, before it's too late. And he would just present the gospel with clarity. Ray Comfort is another individual over here. Now he goes on campuses all across the United States, and he simply speaks to students of, of all backgrounds, of all stripes, of all belief systems, and he simply confronts them with the gospel. In love, he presents to them a savior. But first he reveals their sin need, and he reveals the standards of the word of God. And he just asks probing questions. Have you done this in your life, and this, and this, and this? And invariably they'll all say, yes, I have. And then he'll say, well, God's word, as it, as it looks upon your life, it defines you as an adulterer and as a thief and as a liar and just terms it like, a, like offensive, right? But he conveys that in love and he conveys the truth. And, and as, you watch, as you watch his training, uh, uh, it's amazing how people respond when they see that there is, there is love behind the truth that's being conveyed. Uh, anyways, that's a, that's a great opportunity. We might do it uh, door to door, giving tracks, life to life, just getting to the point. Some are just wired. Just if we if if there's a need in someone's life, just speak directly to it. Just just right to the point. Have a conversation. Right to the point. Engage people in relationships and have friends. Just kind of always that person who's just to the point. Okay. But the key behind this is it must be done with love driving. If not, it will go off track. It'll be damaging. It'll it'll not draw people to Christ. And so love must be the guiding force in all of these expressions. Love for God and then love for the person to whom I am, am engaging needs to be the driving force. Matthew chapter 16 reminds us of this reality. Uh, people were trying to determine and decide who Jesus Christ was. And he asked his disciples point blank. He said to them, who do you say that I am? Point blank. Who do you say that I am? Have you made that determination yet? He said to Peter, when he restored Peter after Peter had denied him three times, he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? These fish around this fire, these disciples right here. Together. Peter, do you love me more than these? Do you love me? He asked him three times. It was, it was love for Jesus Christ that is preeminent and was and is here in these, in these occasions. When we are directly speaking to someone, what we need to love most of all in those encounters is simply a love for the Savior, that we might show them Christ, that we might, that we might draw them by the Spirit of God into a direct encounter with Jesus Christ. It's the, it's the Lord who is at work. He touches the heart. He draws the heart, not us. We need to be careful to listen to the Spirit of God, the timetable of God, have wisdom of God, back off when it's appropriate and necessary. Not every conversation can be driving a point home. It's just not the point. But there is a place for being honest with the Word of God. That's this person. You might say, I'm not very, I'm not very good at this. This is how I'm, how I'm made. But every personality here, every, every expression has a challenge for the believer. Are you and I willing? Are we willing to speak God's truth into people's lives? I may not be good at this, but I must be willing as a believer to speak the truth of God's Word into someone's life. If I'm not willing to do that, then I'm not willing to be a witness for Jesus Christ. I must be willing to do this. This might not be my bent. This might not be the way I function. But I must be willing to at least bear, have this heart about communicating the gospel with others. A willingness to speak God's truth into people's life. So many times we're not willing to do that. And, and, and people just make terrible choices in their life because they've never heard God's love, God's principles, God's truth. A second way that we engage people relationally, just uh, reaching into their life, doing by loving them, reaching them by loving them, is by reasoning with them from the scriptures. Opening the word of God, laying it before their heart, dialoguing with them. We might call that apologetics, defending the faith, uh, giving, giving um, an intellectual approach to the truth of God's word, laying it with, with uh, uh, cohesiveness, what the Word of God says about a particular topic or subject or doctrine or area of living or life or the Savior, right? I think of uh, CARM, Christian Apologetics and Research Ministry. They're a great resource. I think of Answers in Genesis. 
when it comes to just answering the truth and proclaiming the God's word with clarity, uh, speaking the truth. Uh, I think of uh, Ken Ham and Bill Nye when they had that when they had that evening together. Uh, that was an example of this. Josh McDowell, the same way. Movies, The God's Not Dead, just gave a, 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 a dramatic expression of this kind of approach. To just a willingness to stand for God and to explain God's word to them and um, to let God's word be the foundation for truth and for conversation. This approach isn't about uh, winning an argument. It, it's not about even arguing. It's about simply expressing in love the truth of God's word and making it clear and being able to have confidence to open God's word and say, let me show you what God says about this. And let me show you what a God's love for you. Let me show you how God sees you. And being able to just have a, a confidence with God's word. And so the need to be a student of God's word. Paul in Acts just revealed this same love, a love for his truth, God's truth. When we approach someone like this, that's what we are uh, revealing. Just a love for the truth of God's word. Paul went into Thessalonica when the church was just getting started, into the into this uh, synagogue, and he reasoned with them from the scriptures for three days, explaining and, and proving that the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When he came to Athens in verse 23, they worship all kind of gods, and there was a, there was a statue there, an altar there that, that worshiped the unknown God. And Paul says, "Let me explain him to you," and explain creator God from the scriptures to them. It's just the ability to handle the word of God. So you and I need to be students of God's word. Be ready to strive to have an answer for why we believe what we believe and why we do what we do. This personality, this approach, not personality is the wrong word. This isn't personality driven. It's the way God's made us. Um, it is a spirit of God driven. But, but this, the, the way we engage people this way is, is to have confidence in the, in the Word of God, the ability to use it. You may say, you know, I'm not real good at this. This isn't my thing. But you and I, we need to stand with conviction on God's Word. You need to know where you stand. You need to learn to be a student of God's Word so that you can explain to your kids, why, why do we make these choices in our home and not these choices? Why do we do this and, and not do that? Why do we go to church? Why do we do this? And, and what comes through is not that the Bible is just a matter of rules and regulations. The Bible is a matter of a living relationship with Christ. And the Word of God just reinforces that. And to know the Scriptures is to reinforce that reality, that we are in a love relationship with Jesus Christ. The third way that we might engage people is simply to share from our life personal testimony, uh, examples from our life. Uh, Johnny Erickson Tata is a good example of this. How God has just used her life since her accident as a teenager, paralyzed from the neck down, and, and all that she's been able to do, just a living testimony for Jesus Christ. Pacific Garden Missions I had, a, had a radio program called Unshackled. I used to listen to it a lot when I was younger. Uh, just the testimonies of, of the lives of people, how they've been dramatically changed and transformed. Uh, what a beautiful expression. Life Action Ministries is a, is a revival ministry. Just how lives can change in the hands of God as we conform to God. Fellowship of, of Christian Athletes or Sports Spectrum. Just an, a venue and an opportunity for athletes to share how God is using them in athletics to be an example and a witness for Christ. All these things are life witness. That's what they're all about. It's not I but Christ. It's not about us. The narrative isn't about us. We may talk about what God's doing in our life, but it's not about us. It's about what God is doing in our life. It's about how that He is the reason behind this. We must make the narrative always about Him, even if this is the way that we engage people. We need to be careful that when we engage people, we share these details, and we share these stories, and we share what God, but it's about God. We seek to try to draw them and their focus ultimately to Christ. That's the key. John chapter 9, you have the man who was born blind, and God healed him. What a beautiful thing. His, response, his testimony here is just life testimony. He said, I don't know if Jesus Christ is a sinner. This is early on in his engagement with Christ. But one thing I know, I was blind. I can see. He healed me. He changed me. He says, if he, wasn't for, if he was not from God, he could do nothing. That's what I know. This is what I know. If he wasn't from God, he couldn't do this. He was saying what? He's from God. When he finally met Jesus Christ, he says, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped him. Life story. Life story. Jesus came, transformed his life. Great cost. He would, lose, he would lose everything in that encounter. The ability to go to the synagogue and worship. Because now he's a blasphemer. Now he'd be cast out because he associated with Christ. 
There's great cost at times to sharing Jesus Christ. There's a great cost to being a believer and being bold about that. Even with this, even with this style or any style, engaging people. Response against the gospel can be strong and brutal. We must be people who love. You might say, well, I'm not that good at this. This isn't my thing. But are you willing to, are you willing for God to use you, to change you? Because we all must be able to communicate with people that we care about that God is changing me, that God can use me. Our desire needs to be, must be, God use me. And so that's our prayer. That's our prayer. Are you willing for God to change you? At the heart of, a, of that authentic relationship, Lord, I love you vertically. The heart of that is, God, change me. I want to be like you. That's the very heart of that relationship. This must be true. Even if that's not the, the way that I engage people, this heartbeat must be mine. Number four, another way that we can engage people for ministry, to serve, to share, to do, to, to love them, because that's what doing is. It's loving them biblically. Okay? Number four is, is to build on the relationships that God's put in our life, uh, to serving them, um, gathering people together that, that, are, that are in our life, that connect to us already. That who's, Who are the people in your life that God is putting in your path? There are people that are consistently in your path that, don't know, that, that do not know the Lord. They're unsaved. Might be someone who works at the cash register or a, a, a ticket, a parking ticket val, a person at the parking garage. It might be your neighbor down the street, next door, uh, someone that you work with. Who has God put in your life? Who has He put in my life? Who can I reach for Jesus Christ? Who can I? What kind of relationships can I build on? Just because I care for people, I need to care for people. I need to love people. It's in God's hands what happens with the heart, but I gotta love them. You and I must love the people that God's put in our life. Luke chapter 5. We see Matthew here. His name's also called Levi. Jesus went out, saw Matthew sitting at a tax booth, and he says, follow me. That's all we have there. No more context. And he left everything, and he rose, and he followed him. It's interesting what we see happen next. And so he makes a huge feast, a great feast in his home. Food, man, that's where it's at. He's got money, he's got the ability, he's got a feast. He draws people together, it's food. And who does he invite? People just like him. People in his life. He doesn't go out and get people he doesn't know. He invites people that are already connected to him in his life, and he pulls them together. Here are tax collectors. He was hated, so were these men too. Jesus, Jesus changed his life, and he wants his friends to have the opportunity as well. Um... And so that's key. It's people. It's relationships. People, relationships. It's, it's taking advantage of the relationships that God's put in my life. You may say, I'm not really good with relationships. I'm better maybe with something else. Um, the dialogue or the to the point or whatever. That might not be my thing here. But are you willing to reach into your world for Christ? Uh, it's being authentic. It's having an open heart. Uh, the gift of hospitality. It's more than just food. We saw it food here, but it's more than that. It's saying, I care for people. I am willing to open my heart to the needs of people around me and to show the love of God. Uh, we need to be willing to reach out to the people who are in our life for Christ. Number five, another way is simply um, relationally is to invite people, is to connect people. To invite people into uh, into a context, to to connect people with other people, um, that's what it's all about. It's it's seeing a need in someone's life and saying, you know, I'm not sure I know how to handle that need. I'm not sure I know what to do. I'm not sure I am able to find uh, the answers that I know God has for that need. But I know someone who can. And to, and to strive to make that connection relationally or or invite them to a small group Bible study in a home, uh, in a neighborhood, maybe one that you're going to, to invite them to church, invite them to an outing, to an event, to a men's event, to a ladies' event, to a, to the youth group, to, um, to a WANA, to a church somehow, um, to invite them into a, into a connecting point where they can meet someone who can connect relationally and also connect with the ability to meet a need in their life. 
And so you and I in this, in this moment are, are facilitators, we're conduits, we're connectors. And we connect people together and you say, oh, I can do that. I'm not, I'm not good at sharing my faith and I'm not good at, at just, you know, being able to, just such, to really know the word with detail. I, I'm not really always good with people, but boy, I can connect people. I have a way of listening to people and, and to perceive needs that they might have in their, in their life and in their heart. You know what? And I, I can connect these two. I think I'm going to do that. God can use that in your heart. Love needs to drive it. It's a love for building bridges. It's a love for being a, a vessel in God's hand. It's a love for people. That's what it's all. John chapter 4, we see, the, we see the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus Christ changes her life and transforms her. And she left her water jar, that's why she came, went into the town, said, Come see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this man be the Christ? And they came and they listened to Jesus Christ and they said, Because it's no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard ourselves. She connected. She was the connector, the facilitator. She brought them to Jesus. She knew her need had been met, but she didn't know how to convey that. She didn't, she didn't know how to answer the questions that they had. She didn't know how to do what they needed to hear. She didn't know how to convey that, but she knew that Jesus did, and she connected them. You can do that. I can do that. That's what she did here. You might say, well, that's not my thing. I'm not really comfortable getting different people together. But here's the key. Are you willing to influence others towards Christ? That's what this is doing. And that needs to be your passion and your heart too. To influence others towards the Lord in some way, shape, or form. How do we do that? How do we convey that? Lastly, another, another way that we, can, that we uh, engage people uh, in ministry and in sharing the gospel is one that we often think about. It's serving others. Serving others. I think of two organizations here. I think of Chuck Colson's Angel Tree uh, with Prison uh, Fellowship, program of Prison Fellowship. I've been involved in this in years past. It's a beautiful program. But it's a ministry to meeting the needs of families whose parents, a parent or parents, are in prison. It's just an expression of love. It's serving those families. Good Samaritan is the same thing. Here at Christmas or another time during the year, simply meeting practical needs. Uh, it's just serving together as groups, as a people. It's serving people. It's, it's using the, the, the ministry of serving to help others, to express love. That's what it's all about. Acts chapter 9, we see Tabitha, Dorcas. She went by two names here, depending on what culture, what language was being used. Um, in this context, she was sick. She would lose her life. God would use Peter to bring it back. But this is what's said about her. This is, this is why she's honored. This is her testimony here. She was full of good works and acts of charity, acts of love. Those works didn't save her. They were the expression of her heart. See, she had a life-to-life uh, -life relationship with Christ. And it, it was revealed, and everyone in town knew it. She was a true servant. And she was, about, she was always about serving other people, humbling herself behind the scenes, tirelessly working and serving others. That's what she did. She was practical. You might say, you know what, that's me. That's, that's how I function. That's how I roll. I'm not, I don't like to be up front. I'm not, a, I'm not, I don't talk easily. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not real quick in my mind to be able to just handle the Word of God. You can grow in all those areas, by the way. All of us were at a point in time in our life just not good at things. Uh, I've, I've grown in a lot of areas of my life that I was very poor at when I was younger. We're all going to continue to do that. God changes us. So because you're not good at something now, don't just leave it there. Let God stretch you. Let Him grow you. Because He will do that. The important thing is, where is your heart? Is it yielded to Him? The important thing is, what is God putting into your life, into your hand? He may put a new, a new instrument in your hand. He may put a new ability in your hand. He may put a new opportunity in your hand. And we learn by doing. This is serving. You may say, that's not something that I just love doing. I don't like always getting my hands dirty. I don't always know what to do. It's just not my thing. I'd rather, I'm more comfortable doing these other things. But even if, if that's not true, you need to ask God for a servant's heart. Because you know what? Of every, of every Christian, whether I'm a, a, an elementary, a teenager, a young person, an adult, a grandparent, 
God expects every believer to have a servant's heart. Why? Because that was his heart. He came to seek and to serve those who were lost. And he places that heart in us. If we want to be great in the kingdom of God, we are to be a servant. He calls us to be a servant. So really, we're all called to do this. All these we're called to express. There is the heart of God behind every one of these expressions. And we are to capture an element of the heart of God in all of these. But we, we will probably be more comfortable in one of these six expressions, not all of them. You say, I'm better at this, I'm better at this, I'm better at this. I'm not so good at these things. We don't have to strive to, to keep working on areas where we can use Develop those areas where God has gifted you, where you're strong. Grow in those areas. Most of all, give God your heart. Life to life. Let him touch your heart. and Then let him flood your heart with love for the people in your life. Believers and unbelievers. Saved and unsaved. We need to pray. I need to pray that God will just flood my heart with a love for people. Because if I truly love them as the Lord loved me, I will serve them and I will share the good news of Christ. We do all of this because we love God. We do all of this because we love others. We are called to be ambassadors. We are called to be living letters for Jesus Christ. That's what we're called to do. It is life to life. It is Jesus touching my life. It is me responding back to him, embracing him. That is that, is that vertical life to life. It is, it is that love touching my heart, changing my heart. It is my life engaging the others in my life, believer and unbeliever, and, and it is leaving their responses in God's hands, but being committed to loving them, sharing God's word with them, and serving them. That's humility. That's love. Many Christians have forgotten that. These aren't personality-driven. They're Holy Spirit-driven. They're not exclusive to one another. We'll have more than one. So just a final question, a final answer. Where's your heart? Where's your heart this morning? That's the important question. Because from the heart will come the desire to follow after Christ, to, to serve others. I'm praying that, that our church will be strong in loving biblically, biblically loving others. Where is my heart? Where is your heart? We are called to love God, Luke 10, 27, with all of our heart, soul, strength, and mind. We're called to love them that way with everything. Where's your heart this morning? Problem is, sin sin gets in, and we've we've seen this last uh, two weeks ago. Sin gets in and, and wrecks havoc, and our, our ability to receive God's love, our ability to express God's love. What happens sometimes is we get caught up in that relationship with God. It's about me and Him, and and what I can gain in that, and and how I can benefit from that, and and uh, how it makes me look, and all those things. But sometimes I forget to love people. And so I, I'm, in that, I'm in that vertical element, and that's kind of where I live, but I, I fail to convey God's love, and so, I, and so it has no impact. It has, it has, it has no, no positive benefit for Jesus Christ. In fact, it has the opposite impact. It, it pulls people away from Christ because they see me express relationship, and they see me express love for God, but they don't see me love them. We can, as a believer, we can wind up here. What can be true is... is is just a, a lack of love for people and just a, an indifference about God, a, a, um, a barrier between God and my heart. Uh, God is only a convenience in my life at best. I'll go to church if it's convenient. I'll read my Bible if it's convenient. I'll pray if it's convenient. I'll share if I have to. I'll serve if it's really necessary. Uh, people, I don't want to have to deal with people. We might be here in this quadrant. It says a lot about our heart. It may be that I simply don't like people that well, I, God that well. I, I just—it's not that important, you know. I'm a believer. I know I'm going to be. I know I'm going to be in heaven, but really developing that relationship just isn't important. I don't. I don't need it. But you know what? I love people. I'm a people person. I tell you what. If I didn't have people in my life, I don't know what I'd do. That's where this person is. I live for people. I live to please people. I'm devastated when people pass which we, we do grieve. There's no question about that, and it's real, and it's genuine. But there's, but there's something that's in our life that's, that's far deeper, far richer than even the, most, the closest people in our life. That, that's God. But in this quadrant, there's just a disconnect from God while there's a focus on people. So I'm driven by their opinions. I'm driven by the way they think. I'm driven to please them. 
and it just is harmful. When I'm in these three quadrants, I'm not accomplishing the, the fruit of the Spirit. I'm not accomplishing the purpose of God's Word in my life. I'm not, I'm not impacting the people I love the most, or that I say I love the most. I'm not impacting them towards Christ. I'm not impacting them for eternity. God wants me to love Him with all my heart, all my soul, and all my mind. That's the choice. That's the challenge. We're to do that. We're to love God fully. May God work in your heart and mine. May He continue to move our hearts to this. Because my heart still needs to be moved more to that. And it's going it to need to happen tomorrow and the next day. Every day I've got to wake up and I have to realign my heart with these goals. Every day. And so do you. When I do that, then I'm in, I'm in a better place to go through the day pleasing my Savior in that love, life-to-life -life relationship and engaging people in my life with the love of God in a life-to-life -life relationship to them. If that's your heart, God will use you. You will know the blessing and you will know the riches of God touching your heart and touching people through your life. Do you want that? Will you pursue that? Will you make that the priority of your life because it's the priority of your Savior's heart? Will you and I do that? Will we be soul winners? Will we be servants? Will we do what God's called us to do because we love Him so much? Lord, we pray that you would, you would drive your love deep into our heart, conform everything that is in our life around that love. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining with us. We're not going to be together next week. We have a, a guest speaker, and uh, then we'll, we'll re-engage and meet up again. So thank you for being with us today. May the Lord bless you.